hello everybody uh, same as usual uh, for those of you that uh, are first time uh, to these sessions uh, if you just go into the description uh, or manually type in makecode.microbit.org uh, we usually wait for 10 or 20 seconds now for people to join the session uh, but today we'll be looking at gaming um, uh, particularly more interactive games and using all the game commands so do load up now uh, do get to makecode.microbit.org and hopefully you'll see a screen similar to this uh, except you may or may not have uh, multiple uh, projects already open as long as you can see the purple plus we'll be ready to go today so we'll just bear two seconds while we wait for everybody to turn up for that Okay, so everything seems to be okay. Let's get straight into it. Uh, click your new project. And when you do that, uh, we'll see the usual screens that we've been used to seeing over the last few weeks. And uh, we're gonna explore something a little bit different today. Um, we're gonna be using gaming using the game commands because it takes a lot of the hard work uh, off for you. So what you can do is simply just uh, go to the advanced section and you'll see game commands there. So we'll be using that today uh, to help us out with most of the work that we do. But also um, we'll be uh, using a little bit of variable work and we'll take you all the way through that uh, straight away. So uh, this game is a reaction game based on a dot that moves around the screen. And with all games, you need sprites. Now sprites, are just uh, characters. So um, when we were dealing with gaming, if, you, if you've got a character moving on the screen, whether that's a goodie or a baddie, they're referred to as sprites. Um, so we're gonna go in and we're gonna click on variable and we're going to click on a new variable and we're gonna call it sprite. Simple as that, S-P-R-I-T. And then we have some options that now come up for us. What we're then gonna do is we're going to set the sprite we're going to bring it on and when the game starts and i'm just going to move the forever over here just to keep it out of the way um that's going to set a sprite to something at the moment we've not defined what that is but uh we've got a sprite ready to uh, go into the screen and the way in which you do that is we go to the game commands these new blocks that we'll be experiencing today when you click on the game You'll see there's lots of things in here, but it is the first one uh, that we're after. Create sprite at, and then we drag it in to that uh, pill shaped uh, hole there. And then we uh, have our command uh, set sprite to. And then that has created a dot in the middle of our micro bit ready to go at two two. Now you'll notice um, we've got different uh, grids here and I'll explain those in a moment. We've got a five by five grid here uh, and I'll explain how to move around and plot that for the moment. So what we have now is a sprite that is very boring because it doesn't do anything. So what we're gonna actually do is we're gonna make it move. So we're gonna go to the game control and we're going to uh, move our sprite uh, by one and there we have it we have move sprite by one and what we're going to do is we're going to say that that's going to happen forever so uh, it's going to keep moving one block forever now as we're saying there just have a look at what happened here as I refresh it moved all the way across the screen but stopped and it went so fast that uh, we didn't see it move from the middle to the edge but it just moved one in the x direction and remember that x axis is a cross and uh, for those of you that have ever been taught by me maybe we actually call it a cross because an x is an actual cross if you think about the way in which you write it so that's how i always remember that the x um, uh, coordinate is a cross and we have y points to the sky so x and y moving across and this sprite moved by one moves me across in the x direction from the middle to the edge and that's where we have our problem we've got our problem because 
it's moved to the edge and what do I do? Well, thankfully, in the game control here, we have a uh, bounce option, which is uh, really, really useful. And it says, if on edge, bounce. And then we can drag that into the forever. And that will bounce my sprite backwards and forwards across the screen. But you can see it's going so fast it looks like it's randomly doing it. It looks like it's behaving oddly. And that's just because the online emulator is struggling to process that command over and over and over again, really, really, really quickly. So what we want to do is slow that sprite down to a manageable speed so that we can um, actually try and play a game. At this point, it's, it's a real struggle. And you can see as I move the mouse across and the, the browser is uh, trying to do some extra processing, that's when it slows the device down. So if I wiggle the mouse there, you can actually uh, show how uh, the processors are increased and it slows it down. But we actually want to fix that value. So use the basic, drag in the pause, and in the forever, we've got 100 uh, milliseconds, a tenth of a second, and that's much better. Uh, those, uh, there's some adults in the room, they may see that as a Knight Rider emblem going backwards and forwards or some Cylons. Uh, so you've got to ask your parents about that one. So here, we can actually change the speed to 200 if we want to slow that value down. So the longer the pause, obviously the slower the command. And you could take it right the way down to one second. Be a bit of an easy game this one because there you go, you're moving it around. But that's how you would control the level of uh, difficulty, I would say. So you can take that pause, and I think 200 is a decent speed myself, uh, but this is personal preference, okay? It is a reaction game. You don't want to make it too easy, but you also don't want to make it too hard. Um, and that's the good thing about game design. We have to test it. Game testing is a career. You know, game developing will earn more money, but game testing, there's lots of people that review games and uh, are thought quite highly of, but quite difficult to become a, a, a games tester. Um, you have to have a lot of followers and things like that. So what we have to do now is we have to add an element into the game that will um, tell us whether or not we've been successful or not. And we're going to do this by pressing the A button um, as our firing mechanism. So we're going to go into the input and we're going to go to on uh, button A press. And we're going to have to ask the computer a question. So when we're asking question, hopefully in your mind, you already know where I'm going if you've done this before. We're going to be going to logic to make a decision. And a very um, familiar pattern, if you've been here through the whole uh, week and a half, uh, we go to logic. And I'm going to do an if else here, but I usually uh, go straight to ifs all the time and just add my pluses in. So I'm just going to go in, use my if statement, and then second, I always go into my logic and grab a comparison out. It doesn't really matter which one you use of these two, sorry, uh, but I just pick the top one and then we'll just go from there. And what we need to ask ourselves is we need to ask a comparison with the sprite. But because it's in a game situation, um, we need to go to the game uh, block and we need to ask it about the sprite's X coordinate. Where is it along this line? So we drag this one over and we, and we drag it into that pill shape. So we got that from the game design and we got that in the sprite x direction. We could change the y and the x and different other things, but we're, uh, which, have, which have uses as we get into this game design. But right now, it's just asking where or where is the uh, x value. And here, and we have to learn our grid values now, that is 2, 2. Right in the middle is 2 in the x direction and 2 in the y direction. If I move my, my mouse up into different locations, um, we will work out what those are in a moment. It only seems to tell you when uh, uh, an active uh, light is on rather than not. So I'll tell you how you map your way around there in a moment. So we're looking to see when it equals two, bang in the middle. And when we do that, um, that's given us enough logic to discuss whether or not we've uh, done something well. And if we've done something well, in games, we go to games, 
we change the score. So I'm going to change the score by one. So the game blocks, as soon as you start using them, there are certain things that are already programmed into the micro bit. So the fact that the uh, score started at zero, for example, uh, that's already been programmed in because usually we think on start, I'd need to set the variable score to zero, which it would be if it was one of our long winded games. But here, the game blocks allow you to speed up your game design by having things like lives, scores, uh, uh, game overs that we'll come to in a second. Um, and that's what it has. So right now we've got a game that works. And if I click, nothing happens. If I'm clicking on the outside, if I click in the middle, you'll see there's a little animation to say that I've added the score by one. And that's pre-programmed. I've not had to do that. That's all contained within the change score by one. But at the moment, there's no real risk here because I'm getting scores when I go into the middle, great. Uh, but when I'm missing, there's no, nothing that's happening. So the game's pretty boring because all you're doing is accruing points with no risk of failure. And without that risk, the game has no um, no way to be exciting. Not that this is the most exciting game in the world, I appreciate that. Um, but in the confines of being able to do something online, uh, this is where we're at. Um, but we need a risk. And so to do that risk, we go back to our button A press and we click the plus button and we say, well, what happens if I don't get the X at two? In other words, if I've missed it. And what we'll do is quite simply in the game design, we're going to go down there and they have a game over scenario. That's the one there. And that does a lot of things that we're about to see now. So if I'm clicking in the middle, yes, yes, and I'll do it one more time, yes. And I think the game's a bit easy. I might speed it up in a moment. When I deliberately miss now, it does this animation, which is pre-programmed for game over. And then it scrolls the game over across the screen, which is also pre-programmed. And it gives you the score, which I did it three times. So it should be a score of three. There we go. And that's all done for you. Now, normally we'd be uh, adding the score by one and then we'd be doing things like uh, going back to basic and doing show number score and all those kind of things. So this is why the game blocks are really good. and. You may say, well, why didn't I show you this beforehand? Because it's really important that we learn uh, where that code comes from because it's pre-programmed. And we know there's a variable behind the scene and we know that the computer's actually not just doing game over, but there's a series of commands that game over is doing for us. And it is important to, to know that there's something extra going on in the background. Now, again, uh, I could speed up the game and I could take it to 100 uh, uh, there on the pause. And there you go, going across the screen. There we go, straight away failed um, and got to the game over. I find that 100 millimeters, I'm just, you know, maybe I'm too old, but I find the 100 difficult. Uh, maybe you're better. If you want to refresh the game because you don't want to uh, see the score, uh, it takes a little while to say game over and then the score, you can just click the refresh button and then go straight back to another game. And look at that, I'm just rubbish at this, aren't I? So maybe you have a go and you're saying, uh, I don't know what you're talking about, this is really easy. Um, and here it just uh, stopped there, so I can press the refresh again uh, to go there. So here, I think maybe you have to predict it a little bit further forward than not. Maybe have a go, maybe a pause and a go and see if you're better than me. I think I'm waiting, maybe you have to do it a bit before it. Now nah, I'm struggling. So I'm going to stick it back to 200 because I'm awful at this game. Uh, maybe 150 would be a bit better. You can manually type in uh, values as well. You don't have to use the pre-prepared values that they've got. There we go. Getting better at that. Oh, there we go. So maybe 150 is a good level for me uh, personally. Um, but what I need to do is I'd like to add um, an extra life. I'd, I'd like to say, do you know what? I'm going to get at least one chance before I fail because that way um, you, you can get a chance to learn the game uh, before you have to go through the game over all the time. So to do that, I need to create uh, lives. Now, 
Thankfully for me, uh, this is really easy on the game design. On the game design we go in and it says set life to whatever. So I'm going to set life to uh, two lives um, because if one life, it, that's what we already had. We had one life because we failed, it went to zero and the game was over. So um, what, I, what I'm going to do here is now say um, I'm going to set the life to two. Now if I set the life to two, I need a way of removing the life. So if I'm successful, no lives should be removed. But if I'm not successful, I should go to game and then I should uh, remove life. There we go. So not just um, that, I'm just going to remove uh, the life. Now, one thing, if you've got lives, you no longer need a game over because the computer again understands that if you've removed lives then and you've got none left then that's where you're at so uh, remove life I've said remove zero lives which is not what we want to do we want to remove one life a piece so now we can go back to our game and we should get a free hit so let me deliberately well let me try and see if I can hit it there we go didn't hit it so I got a cross hit it that time is good so I've still got one life left hit it oh no I didn't I missed there we go so I'm going to slow it down so I, I know at 200 because I'm obviously bad at this game that we've worked out and so here success 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 so three lives at uh, three points I'm going to miss once there you got the X comes up and I'm going to miss again and there's my game over so when that score comes through I should have three points now we can also talk about the fact that maybe you need to be um, uh, you're rewarded for getting things right and there we go three points but you should be um, you should have some sort of penalty uh, if you've got that wrong so I'm going to duplicate change score stick it down into here and I'm also going to minus one from my life um, if I miss so here one Oh no, I've missed there. I'm going to refresh that. Sorry, because I want to show you the scores adding up. Should get better at this game, shouldn't I? And press play, or just press refresh if uh, if it messes up. So one, two, three, and then when I miss, and I missed again. So I actually did miss a, a separate time to that. Let's see if it's taken away points because I hit a couple of times. Um, but I also missed, so I shouldn't have a high score here. The score is one because I hit it twice, but then I lost my life uh, to go there. So um, let's just see if that does work because really if I've lost one life, I should minus. And then if I lose another life, that should have taken two away. So let's have a little look. One, two, three and then miss once, miss twice. So according to my maths, I think I should have one point because I hit three times and I missed twice. And the change score comes before the removal of my life. So that should just give me a score of one. There we go. So everything seems to be in order, but I was unsure, wasn't I, when I was playing the game? I was unsure if I was uh, if I had a life left or not because there's no indication. So I need a health bar of some description, and unfortunately, they don't have uh, a health bar in the score. So we're going to have to manually create one. And the thing that we need to do there is we need to create a new variable, and uh, my first variable is going to be uh, life one representing my first life and another variable with life two to represent uh, my other life. Now we then need to do exactly the same as we did at the top here. So I need to go and go back into my variables and in fact actually to save me getting loads of stuff I'm just going to use this same one and duplicate it. And remember that's two finger click on your uh, trackpad and I'm going to duplicate that bring it in and I'm going to say create life one at and then I'm going to deliberately do this wrong I'm going to say four four just to show you 
where 4, 4 is. So this may seem like it doesn't make sense. Why is that 4 when I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 lights on the x direction and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the y direction? And that's because, if you've been listening over the last uh, few days, when we're dealing with computers, we start counting at zero. So we have zero, one, two, three, four, and we have zero, one, two, three, four. I know, uh, I've said it before, I know that's annoying, but you just have to get used to realizing that in coding, we start with zero. Now, that means that this one up here, that's zero, zero, as it's uh, giving away there now when I'm uh, moving around in it. So I didn't want my life to appear down the bottom, unless you do. Life bars usually occur at the top, so I'm going to stick in life, um, life one in uh, zero, zero. And then I'm going to duplicate life one, and I'm gonna set my life two, my second life, not at zero, zero, because that's directly above it, I want to stick it by the side. Remember that this is the x direction, so we need to change the x to 1. And now we have those two lives represented on the screen. There is still something else to do here uh, for our life creation, um, because as I'm playing the game here, and I lose my life there when I miss, it still says that I've got two lives. So I needed to delete that life when I missed. And when I miss, I'm down here into that area. So I need to um, get my game and I need to delete. And I'm not going to delete a sprite because that's the actual thing that's moving uh, around. I'm going to delete and I can do the drop down box for life two because I want life two to disappear to tell the user that I've got um, only one life remaining. So let's see if that works. I'm going to deliberately miss. There we go. Life's gone down to one and miss again. And we've got game over. And because I missed twice, I'm hoping that my score should actually be minus two, which is terrible. Uh, the worst score you can get in the game, two misses straight off uh, the back. And let's see if it does do minus two. Oh, it just gives me a zero. So it looks like the scoring system doesn't allow me to go below zero. So uh, it would do if it was a normal variable number. Uh, so the scoring system that's pre-programmed won't allow you to get negative points, which uh, you may like or you may not like, but that's just where we are. So zero is uh, the smallest score uh, that you can get. Now, we can add extra features, I suppose, to this game. Uh, different graphics, uh, different items that we have. So for example, uh, we could set uh, a lot of plots to maybe make this more like a, a running game. So you would probably have in a running game um, some form of, uh, of kind of uh, ground or something that you have there. And you can go to the, um, you can go here and we've got create sprite and um, we still have to create those things as we go. Um, and we can actually have touching edges. So you can actually have, um, if you get to the edge, then maybe you do something else rather than the bounce. Um, we have got um, decision makers, because remember where we've got these blocks um, for decisions, you can actually have, if the game is uh, running, or if the game is paused, or if the game is over. So you can have extra screens uh, when we have the game over commands. So lots to lots to think about there. Um, one of the things that becomes slightly more difficult is if you go over two lives, because it's easy to set the lives, because we can go in and uh, actually need to create another variable, won't I? So I can go in and create life three, and then I can just grab in here stick in life three and change that to number two now and then i'll have this value there i need to make sure that i've set three lives there we go the problem uh, becomes here we've only got 
um, one if statement. So this is where we would get slightly more complicated and I'm going to apologize for the next uh, couple of minutes for those of you that uh, don't get what I'm saying, but many will, so, so I am going to say the words. Um, we had the if statements here and it said if you are um, hitting the X, then do this. It said else. Now we can't just take away lives. We're going to have to make decisions here. So what we're going to do is have to have a logic. And we had uh, different logics here with game over and things like that. Uh, but I'm going to have to go into my comparison now. And there we go. And what we've got in the game design is we can have a look and we can have a look at the variables, add life, set score, remove, li remove life. Um, but we have got score there as a variable. And if I go into more, uh, we don't have that actually. I'm looking for the, um, if life, uh, the lives are equal to. So let me just have a look if I can change that. And this may be the um, difficulty of this game. Yeah, so this is where you might not want to use the life section within uh, gaming because there are limitations. Here, I was looking for a little pill shape that would represent if the lives, because we have a, a life as a variable, um, is a certain value. We don't have that. We've got score, for example. Um, so maybe um, maybe I'll have a look at that more than anything. And I'll just go, if the score is equal to 2, because you've done something right twice, Maybe you can say a little few words, say a string, keep going. Now, probably not a two, because probably that's an easy, easy number. Um, and I'm just going to take away the uh, set life three, because that's going to cause me some problems. I might bring it back in a minute. So let's just see uh, what would happen uh, with this game. Got two lives. I'm going to bring it in here. There we go. And I'm going to deliberately do one, two, three. So we've got problems in that uh, the score did equal two and it didn't register that at all. So um, this is where we're kind of saying the game functionality will give you some simple things, but for more complex um, ideas and more graphically orientated objects, you're going to have to go back to the old method of using variables. So here I wouldn't say set life to two. I drag that back in. What I would actually do is create the variables as we had and the variable would be life with no numbers. And then we would use or we could do anything we wanted to with that. And the reason why I'm saying that is because here we've got set life to two, or let's actually go for three that we said before. So let's drag you in. Set life to three now. And that's enabling me to do a lot more with my objects because here I've got a variable and I can say if life equals and then we can go to two then I can say similar things to this I'm going to get rid of all of that we're going to duplicate that change score by minus one because we still want to lose a life and um, we need to remove the life first duplicate so there we go, uh, if life equals three, so we need to start at the top, remove a life, change score by one, and then delete life three. So let's have a quick look to see if that does something. There we go. So I've got three lives, I'm gonna miss. There we go, and it's gone down. So we were able to do that much more easily by coming out of the game command. So these do have limitations is kind of what I'm saying and I, I may they apologize if some of that was it was a bit confusing but we can make simple games but if we want to add more flexibility here we need these extra items so here I can add the plus and I can say duplicate just messing around there we go duplicate and now we're saying if life equals two 
do exactly the same things. We're going to change the score. I'm just going to drag all this block up actually. Uh, change the score, uh, remove the life. We'll do that first actually. I'm going to keep things in a more logical order now. Remove the life, change the score by one, and then remove life two. And then lastly, it, I don't like people that have known me before. I don't like just leaving the else's as uh, the last option. I like to have a, a cross. So if life equals two, oh, sorry, life one, then we actually we're just game over, aren't we? So we're going straight to using that game over command. And there we go. And if it's none of those, something's gone wrong with the code. I'm going to just show a sad face to represent something going wrong with the code. Okay, so that should be okay. For two lives. Da, 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 da. Yep, there we go. So miss once, miss twice, and life two didn't disappear there. So I'm just going to have a little check with that in a second. And then my game was over. So there was a reason that I need to check into here that life two didn't disappear. I'll just check that game again. Testing, testing, testing. Remove once, remove twice, and remove three times. So there is an issue with deleting life two when you do that. I'm just gonna change the order and make it do that first, because I had three lives. Ah, what we did is we removed a life and uh, what we didn't want to do was that at all, because what we did was we wanted to actually remove the variable. So we actually wanted to change the variable. That was the reason why. So when we're coming out of that command, change life by minus one. So that will remove it. So I needed to remove those remove lives and stick them in with the variables. So that's why I like to do these things in real time because I want to show you the debugging techniques that you would get to there. So let's have another look at that now. So let's refresh that game. Lost one life, lost another life, there we go. And it's gone down and the last one, game over. There we go. And that was all because we were using a variable which has more flexibility to allow us to do these things than actually using the game commands. So again, if that last five minutes was uh, just a little bit beyond you, don't worry about it. Um, you were able to get to a good game before that, but those game developers out there or people that wanna push the envelope a little bit harder, um, you've seen that there's limitations to the game blocks and you may have to go back to variables, but you can use a nice combination of the two to get exactly what you wanted. And now I can just uh, more, much more easily just add four, five, six, seven, eight. And I think um, adding five is quite nice because you can fill up the whole bar, add the variables, fill up the entire bar, and you've got a much longer game. And maybe, and uh, maybe you can go in, and I do like this concept. Let's start off, um, really um, yeah normal speed but let's bring in a variable called speed and this is why avoiding the game designs you can actually go a little bit faster set speed to 100 because that's the millimeters we want and instead of um, pausing by an amount we can actually drag in the variable speed and I'm actually just going to show that uh, I'm going to start off with 400 to show the uh, Speed changes a little bit better. And then I'm gonna go in to change the speed. Now, every time I lose a life, I'm gonna rack, uh, I'm gonna change the speed by minus 100 or 200 in fact, like that one. And then maybe 100 on the last one. Otherwise, at the moment we're at zero. And that will speed up the game as we lose lives. So you're starting off really slow which should get you some nice early points. But if you uh, miss one, ah, there's a different code there because uh, if life was two, change the speed by minus 200, change the speed, set speed to 400. Ah, so yeah, that should, yeah, should be okay. What I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm not. I'm going to set speed rather than change speed. I think that was uh, the difficulty there on the variable. I don't because we started off the variable here. 
um, that was a bit of a difference. So here I'm going to go in and say set, set speed to 200 uh, rather than change it. So I don't think it's liking that code. And then I'm going to set the speed to the fastest rate. I'm going to set it to maybe 50 because that should be really quick. And let's see if that one's a little bit better. So nice and slow to begin with, getting things right, getting it right. And let's see, wrong. Still going to that wrong option. So I'll have a little check through and I'll probably add the code into the uh, the box afterwards. Or if somebody uh, can make a comment about why they can see that that's gone wrong. Um, as soon as it went right, if life equals three, which it... Ah, yeah, no, that's if life equals three, change the life by one, change the score by one, delete the life, set speed to 200. And then forever that speed should be at 200. Um, so yeah, I'm struggling to find out what that is that's wrong. It's liking the hits, um, but let's see if we can work out what to do for there. But I'll leave it for now and uh, I'll post uh, an answer uh, below what it was I did into the comments. Okay, thank you very much. See you tomorrow.